about now. It's okay. Yes. So let's start. So before before entering section two, uh, let me do one correction. So in my previous talk, I I gave this isomorphism. So where x is a quasi compact quasi separated scheme, and this isomorphism is itself okay. So this holds too. But I I said this this is given by the map from from SPC to the homogeneous prime spectrum of the some gradient commutative ring, but this is not necessary to. So, uh, but this is true if x is affine or projective. So, so a pretty quick quote that. So, this but this isomorphism itself holds uh, uh, two four. Okay. So and one more. So from from now on we use this. We fix this node. So R is always committed in necessary ring. And B something R denotes the derived B something of finitely generated R modules. And K is, KR is the homotopy category of projective, finitely generated projective R modules. And star always either minus or bar B. So from so today I will speak about cross spine compactly generated ideas and co compactly generated ideas of B minus R. So, so let me give. So let's start. Let's start by remind you of the definition of compact or co compact region. So let P be a triangulated. Not necessary tensor, ten, just the triangulated category. Then, first, an object M in P, P is compact, said to be compact, or respectively, PM is co compact. If the following natural morphism is a nice morphism, so the na natural morphism from the direct sum of home sets of M and lambda to home P M the direct sum of the end of it. So we have always had this natural morphism. And M is said to be compact if this, uh, this morphism is a nice morphism. For, so what I, I also reserve here for co-compact probability uh, for all correction, corrections of objects in P with such that the direct sum exists in P. Okay. So for such corrections in lambda, then this natural morphism is a nice morphism. Then it is said to be compact. And dually, M is, so we say that M is co-compact if the following natural morphism from the direct sum of from N lambda M to from direct product of N lambda So we say that M is co-compact if this natural morphism is a nice morphism for all corrections N lambda with so the, this direct product being in P. So 
this is the definition of you know, compact and co-compact objects. And we set Tc, T to the C, the collections of compact objects of T. And also, we denote by TCC to be the collection of core compact objects. Okay. And finally, we say that an ideal An idea of T is compactly generated <coughs> respectively co-compactly generated generated by compact objects or co-compact objects. As an idea generated by compact objects. So, gener so what is generation? So this means that uh, uh, the thick, cro thick tensor closure, so the smallest thick tensor ideal uh, containing itself, itself uh, so I, I should maybe, uh, uh, this means that, so I, 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 maybe I should <laughs> explain the meaning. So an ideal I, I of T is compactly generated if I is equal to the thick tensor closure in T of something, some compact object is T C. Okay. So this so the gen generation means So now we have the following part. So first, we already know that the compact or co-compact objects of our <laughs> tensor triangulated category D minus R. So first, the compact of D minus R are precisely KDR. And co compact objects of D minus R is uh, DBR. Okay. So then this, the second statement is due to Oppermann and stop check. And uh, I believe this is also known fact, but I, I don't find the exact literature, the difference. So do you know, do you know <laughs> who proved this first? The, the, the proof is very similar to the proof of the fact that the, bound, unbounded, the unbounded DRV category of whole modules for, for this DIV category, the compact is equal to KDR. So to, so 
similarly to the proof of this part, we can also show this equality. But I don't know. No one knows this. Yes, but I I couldn't that that proof. Similar proof. Anyway, this is true. Okay, so now, so for our tensor triangle, so our tensor triangle is category D minus R, compact generation and the co compact generation are already explicit. So compact, compactly generated idea means uh, uh, the thick tensor closure of uh, some objects in K. Okay, so next, let's, uh, let, let me give the definition of usual support. So, so the support, so the, in my previous talk, I, I defined the Barma support, but now I want to define the usual support. support. Just say support. The support of an object x in D minus R is so it's UPP. X is just the union of the support of homology of X as an homology. So this is the definition of support of X. In other words, this is equal to the set of prime ideas P of R such that the localized complex of P, so the so localized of X, local localization of X at P is non-zero in the DID category. So this equality always holds. So even even if X is an unbounded complex of infinitely generated modules, so this equality always, always holds. But since our so since we are working on D minus small mod R, this is also equal to the set of prime ideals P of R, such that the rescue field of P, so the rescue field of P tensor x is non-zero. So sometimes this, this set is called the small support of x. But we have this equality now. So this is one of the key points because, because of this assumption. So if, since x is in d minus r, we have this equality. minus R, um, we set support inverse, uh, no, support X to be the union of support of objects X in X. So, and second, for a subset S of uh, spec R, we set the bracket of S to be the thick tensor closure in D minus R of R mod P where P runs through all prime ideas 
in nets. Check. So we set bracket of s to be the fixed tensor closure. So the smallest six sub, smallest idea of d minus r containing this, containing all of these. So in particular, this is a co-compact, co-compactly generated idea because r mod p is in the in DDR. Okay. R mod P R mod P is of course a module, so it is in particular in DDR, so this idea is always co-compactly generated. Okay, so now now we can state for our first main result of this series of lectures. So we have the following one-to-one -one correspondence. So the set of co-compactly generated ideals of D minus R and As usual, the set of specialization closed subsets specialization closed subsets of spec R. Okay. So we have such a one to one correspondence. Yes, a specialization closed subset it means uh, uh, a subset, a set of closed subsets, as is known, a union of closed subsets. A subset of spec R is called specialization closed if it is a union of closed subsets. Then we have such one to one correspondence, and these maps are given explicitly, sorry, as follows. So from here to here, this map is given by taking supports. And the, the converse is given by this <coughs> bracket. So, to prove this theorem, um, so we need to extend the so-called smash new potent theorem due to Hopkins and Newman. Then we, we need to prove the following result, which should be called generalized. is a morphism in K minus R. If F is a morphism in K minus R with Y being in KBR, we need this assumption. Okay. Then if F tensor kappa P, so kappa P denotes the residue field of P, of R is zero for all prime ideas P of R. So this equality means that this morphism in the homotopy category is zero. So 
This means that this morphism is a new, and this chain map is new, new homotopic. Then, we, we find some integer t such that uh, t fold tensor product of f is zero in the homotopic category. So we can prove this lemma, this result. And actually, this lemma will, this lemma plays a key role to, in the proof of this theorem. And I don't give the pr precise proof of this result, but instead, <coughs> let me give some comments on the proof. So, for Hopkins Neiman, what, what did Hopkins and Neiman do about this? Hopkins and Neiman shows this statement shows this statement for x also in KPR. So if we also assume that x is in the bounded homotopy category, then this statement is precisely the same as the usual origin, o, o, original smash near potency. Okay. But so if we assume, once we assume this, this, so x being in KBR, we can reduce to the case where x is R. Okay, we can replace f by some other morphism, and, so, and then we can assume that x is equal to r. And then, uh, actually this, this reduction is very essential in the proof of the original smashing importance. Indeed, we can we can consider the image of f, uh, image of one, so one, so the unit element of R by f. So in other words, f, f can be regarded, f can be identified with uh, its image, the image of the image of one by f. So f can be thought of as an element of the zeros homology of y. So this is kind of key point in the proof. But in, in general, so our setting, we can not use this reduction. So this is the first remark. And so, but we cannot use this induction, so we need some other tools. So actually we show and use the following statement. First, so for any morphism f in k minus r and any subcategory x of k minus, uh, k minus r, if we tensoring, if we, we take, take this tensor product uh, is zero, and also any so an, other another morphism G and another subcategory Y, the tensor product is zero. So if we assume these two, then we can show that F tensor G tensor x star y is zero in the homotopy category. So here x star y 
means so this is the collection of extensions of x and y in, I, I, I mean such an object x e y so x is in x and y is in y and we collection uh, we, we collect such object e and then this is the definition so the object of x star y is such complex and then we have this and also we need the following statement if x is any sequence of elements x n in R and if f tensor r mod x so f is again an anamorphism so we don't so in these two statements we don't need to assume that y is in kbr so fg so here th these morphisms are general morphisms in k minus r so this is equal to zero then uh, we can replace this part with the kazu complex So this is the Kozu complex of X. But we need to take the tensor product here times two to the n. So n is this number. But if we take this tensor product, then we can replace R mod X by the Kozu complex. So we show these two statements and use the, using these two, two statements, we can prove this lemma. And also, so maybe I, I, I think you may wonder where this assumption why being in KBR is necessary. So this assumption is used for the following. So we need this assumption to have to have this property. Annihilator of RP of FP is equal to the annihilator of R over R of F localized at P. Or in each prime idea P of R. So we can, so, so actually the proof of this lemma is, uh, goes along the same lines as in the proof of the original smashing important theorem. And the, in the, in the original smash in the proof of the original smash important theorem, uh, the annihilator of f is uh, plays a key role, and and if f is uh, in uh, so if y is in KBR, then we can we have this equality. So I mean, taking annihilator and taking localization in a commutative. So this is very important property. So to to get this equality, we need to assume that y is in KBR. Okay. And using lemma 2.5, we have the following proposition, following key proposition. So let x and y be in d minus r. Oh, by the way, d minus r is, of course, d minus r is uh, equivalent to k minus r. 
So we can, we can always replace d minus r with k minus r. And we replace k minus r with d minus r. And if v of annihilator of x is contained in the support of y, so if v of annihilator, so this is annihilator of x is an ideal wall, and v of annihilator x is the set of prime ideas contained annihilator of x. So this set of prime ideas is contained in the support of y, then x belongs to the tensor closure of y. Actually, this proposition will be a uh, very important law. This is a key proposition. And this proposition is shown by using beta 2.5. <coughs> and again, I don't have enough time to explain this proof. But instead, let me give several comments about the proof. So first, uh, If x is in the BR, so if x is bounded from both sides, in both sides, then we have this equality. So B of annihilator of x is equal to the support of x. Okay. So in general, V of annihilator x always contains support of x, but the equality is uh, not necessarily true in general, but if we assume that x is in DDR, then this V of annihilator is uh, coincides with the support. And so in the original Hopkins Neiman theorem, uh, there is a there is a corresponding result to this proposition, and here there. Uh, so I mean original version in the in the paper of Neiman. Uh, this proposition is the statement is like as follows. So if x and y in K V R and if support of x is contained in the support of y, then x belongs to the thick closure of y. So very similar to this proposition, but the difference is here. V of annihilator, we need to replace support of x with V of annihilator, annihilator of x. And actually, this proposition 2.7 does not hold if we have an island of x is replaced with support of x. So uh, proposition 2.7 does not hold uh, if Subtle support of x. Yeah, we have a counter example. And here is one comment about the proof. So I think I can write here. So the proof goes as follows. So we first found we first find a bounded complex y prime by uh, truncation by truncating y. So uh, 
this is a truncation of y such that v of annihilator of x is con contained in the support of y prime. First, we can find such y prime, which is not so hard. And then consider a map, the map from R to home uh, Y prime and Y, tending one to inclusion map, inclusion chain map. Yes. So actually the proof, so this is also similar to the, the proof of the original statement due to, Ho due to Neiman or Hopkins, but we need a lot of, a lot of modifications like this. And finally, the proposition, this proposition, in this proposition we can replace y the object y by a subcategory of b minus r. We can easily to check this. So y is not necessary. So y, 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 the object y can be replaced with any subcategory of b minus r. comments on the proof of proposition 2.7 and as a corollary of this proposition we easily get the following corollary so first for each object x in d minus r we have the following equivalence so if the support of X is the four star spec R, then uh, the thick tensor closure of X is the whole thing, so B minus R, and vice versa. And Let I be an idea of R generated by X and, and uh, let, let X be a subcategory of D minus R, also idea of D minus R. So these are the ideas. The meaning, the meaning is defined. So this is an idea of the commutative ring R. I is an idea of, of the commutative ring R. X is an idea of this tensor triangle category. Then we have, so maybe they should write the following equivalent. First, V of I is the set of prime ideas containing I, it's contained in the support of X. And the second statement is that R mod I belongs to X. And the third statement says that the causal complex is in X. So these three conditions are good. And actually this corollary is an easy or direct consequence, consequence of the proposition 2.7. So it's kind of, it's an exercise, very easy. Okay. So now, now we can prove so now we can prove our first main result, which it, which has already disappeared here. So the theorem 2.4. So maybe I 
Yes, let me give the proof. It's, now it's easy, very, very easy. Proof of the uh, 2.4. So the one to one correspondence between core compactly generated ideas and specialization for subsets. So the proof is the essential part of the proof is the following. So that X B co-compactly generated idea of B minus R. Then, by definition of co-compact generation, X is equal to the thick tensor closure of some object C in DBR. And what we want to show that uh, what, what we want to show is that this x is equal to the bracket of support of x. So x coincides with the thick tensor closure of R mod P, where P runs through all the support that runs through the support of x. Then this this says that x is uh, uh, the one. Yeah, I, of, of course, there, we need we need. There are several other statements to show uh, to get our theorem 2.4, but the, this is the key point. And this equality is now an easy constraint. So the, this inclusion comes from Corollary 2.9. So corollary two, by corollary 2.9, we see that for any primes in the support of x, arm of p is in x. So, and this, this statement shows this inclusion. And the converse, the converse, the, or the opposite inclusion is shown as follows. So to get this inclusion <coughs> relation, it is enough to show that C is in the bracket of support of X. But this is easy seeing that this is equal to the support of C. The support of X is equal to the support of C. So we, what we need is to show that C is in the bracket of support of C. But now C is in the bounded derived category. So we can truncate each object in C, and uh, yeah, actually, each object in C can be built by uh, by its homologies. So I mean, if M is in C, then M is in the thick closure. So you don't need to take the tensor product. M is in, in the thick closure of uh, R mod P where P runs through the support of M. So this comes from this equal this inclusion comes from this, this statement. And this is the, this completes the proof of theorem two point. So now let me give some corollaries of our theorem 2.4. So first, so the following I present.
of d minus r. First, x is compactly generated. And second statement is that x is co-compactly generated. So these two dual notions are equivalent, actually. And this comes from our theorem 2.4. So when this is the case, when this is the case, we simply call x just compact. Okay. In the point, we call such an idea compact. So an idea is compact if either if it is either co-compact regenerated or co-compact regenerated. So this is if this corollary uh, is deduced from our theorem. So let me give a proof. So, so the implication from one to two is obvious because compact generate compact any compactly generated idea is generated by an object in KBR, which is contained in DBR. So it is co-compactly generated. So one implies two. So the the, the implication from 1 to 2 is obvious, so we need to show 2 implies 1. And this is, this comes from the following observation. Let W be a specialization closed subset. Then set A be the thick tensor closure of R mod P where P runs through in W and runs through prime ideas in W. So this is compact, uh, no, co-compactly generated. This is a co-compactly generated idea. So this is co-compactly generated. And let B be the thick tensor closure of KP, where P runs through the primes in W. So KP denotes the causal complex of some system generators of P. So this is the causal complex with respect to P. So this is a perfect complex. So this idea is compactly generated. Okay. Then our theorem 2.4, oh sorry, no, no. Uh, we, if we put this A and B, then we easily see that support of A is equal to the support of B. So by our theorem 2.4, we see that A is equal to B because these two are both co-compactly generated ideas. So again, compactly generated idea is co-compactly generated idea. So we have we can apply theorem 2.4 to get A is equal to B. So this is the proof of the, this problem. Okay. And one more, let me give one more, one more corollary of theorem 2.4. So one more. Precisely speaking, this is a corollary of proposition 2.7. Corollary of two, proposition 2.7. So now, let's assume that R is Artinian. Then, we see that all ideas of 
E minus R, R compact. So in the Artinian case, every idea is compact. So, consequently, there is a one to one correspondence between the set of ideals of E minus R. subsets of spec R. So in, in the Artinian case, any, any subset of spec R is specialization clone. So we have a one-to-one -one correspondence between ideas of E minus R and the subsets of spec R. And the map, the, these maps are given, the same as uh, theorem 2.4. So in the Artinian case, by using this corollary, uh, everything is clear about ideas of D minus R. And actually, I, I don't have enough time to explain the proof of this corollary, but just using this proposition 2.7 and Chinese remind, remainder theorem, uh, we can show this corollary. Okay. So. So this is the end of section two. Now I want to go into section three. So section three. So what? So in section three, we we consider the structure, topological spec structure, Varma spectrum of D minus R, and some classifications of ideas of D minus R. In the, of course, in the non-Artinian case. So, and, uh, and this section three consists of three subsections. So, first, let me, let's, let's enter six, three point one, subsection one. So, to consider struc the structure, so structure, So, to in this subsection um, about the structure of the Parma spectrum as a topological space, we we consider it with uh, by comparing it with uh, the prime spectrum of the commutative ring, base commutative ring R. So let me introduce one notion of ideal. So for a subset S of spec R, we said the support inverse S to be the subcategory consisting of all objects X in D minus R such that the support of X is contained in Ness. Okay. And then an ideal of D minus R. So we say that an ideal of D minus R is tame if it is equal to idea of x of d minus r is tame if it is equal to support inverse of s for some s. Okay. We 
we call such an ideal thing. But this is just a, <laughs> a temp tentative name. So I, I mean, this is not related to tame, for example, tame representation type. Just uh, I, I name this uh, because this is uh, very easy to handle. And set PSPC B minus R to be the tame prime. So now we have the following correspondence between pain primes and the prime ideas of spec uh, prime ideas of R. So proposition 3.2. First, for each prime ideal P of R, so this is a usual prime ideal of the commutative ring R. We set large SP to be the full subcategory consisting of all objects x in D minus R such that xp is 0. So x localized at p is 0. For each prime p of spec r, p, p in spec r, we consider this subcategory of D minus R. Then, this is an actually a prime ideal of D minus R. We can show this. And conversely, for each prime ideal of D minus R, for each prime ideal of D minus R, So the set of ideals i of r such that r of i is not in p. <laughs> so consider such, consider this the set of such ideals of r. Then, since r is assumed to be Noetherian, this set has a uh, has a maximal element with respect to the inclusion relation, and moreover we can show that this has a unique maximal ideal. This has a unique maximal element, element with respect to the inclusion relation. So, so this unique maximal element is called small sp, small sp, and also as usual, this is a prime ideal. Of R. Okay. So we can show this proposition, but I don't have time. So now we have the following correspondence between the spec of R, spec of R and the Parma support of D minus R. So from here, from spec R to SPC, we take large S, and this is small s. So we have this, this, this pair of maps between spec R and the Barmore spectrum. And, and tomorrow I, I will explain the structure of these two maps. And uh, to consider the structure of SPC of D minus R. So I stop. Here.